Hello, it's Debbie with Stitching. I have changed the name of my channel to Stitching because that's what I enjoy doing. And it's easier to close the door and not have people screaming and hollering at me. <laughs> I just hang a sign on the door that says, shh. Anyhow, so for the first time in my life, I joined something. And what I joined was the Sweet Pea Halloween Haunted House Block of the Week thingy. Anyhow, I so I'm behind because they've already done, you know, week two is almost over, I guess. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm working on the first one. The hardest part is picking out your fabrics. And I've got a billion scraps and yet I'm cutting fabrics because it's like, no, not that, not that, not that. So, I... Still have my baby lock. I'm going to do the six inch square, which is sufficient because I'm just going to make like a little hanging thing for my door and it's only going to be up for Halloween. So we're going to do the door today. A lot of talking to say we're doing the door today. Let me see if I can get the book in here. I'm using my phone nowadays. So this is it. I'm making a binder. I know. I need a job. <laughs> I need a life. <laughs> Let's get started on our door. Load design. Use application. Yeah, okay. Place batting one. I went ahead, and since there's going to be 12, I went ahead and I cut out 12 of these. And there's no placement, and there's a camera right in front of my machine, so... I'm just going to try and use my fingers and hope for the best. If it doesn't turn out, I guess I'm going to be ripping some st stitches out. We stitch down this first. Okay. Put down. I've got this little tad of black. You can't see it. But, you know, you just never seem to use up the last of the spools, so that's on here. That made it. Now, I'm not going to give any dimensions of anything I'm cutting. It all comes in the pattern when you buy it. This is not my pattern, so I don't feel it would be right to give you dimensions of the pieces of fabric. All right. Now, I place fabric A right side up on top. Really? Oh, first I do a trim. So now I will trim close to this. Wow, you are right up against it. So this, I cut out 12 of these. I only had this bit, not a whole lot of this. And I wanted something, you know, neon. So the literal background is going to be that. And let's see. Get it straightened out here. We've got that trimmed up. Back to the machine. Face fabric guy right, right side up over top of it. Do, 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 do. I'm sorry. I'm right up against the phone. My head is. And then I start yakking and singing. Ooh, that's got to be rough. 
So this is going to be the background borders is really all you're going to have of it. I wanted to tie it in from one fabric to the next. So, or from, I'm sorry. I wanted to tie it in from one block to the next. So I'm using this green for every block. Now we trim again. For this one, it is to trim inside. First, let's get rid of our tail. Oh, so, I'll have this big piece I'll be able to it says one to two millimeters from the seam so that's what about an eighth of an inch That's quite a distance, actually. I guess I always cut too close. This will be better because you don't want it to fray. And I didn't put Wonder Under on it, so it has a higher possibility of fraying. It should have so many stitch lines over it, you know, like this. I wasn't too terribly worried about it. All right, come here. Okay, so I've got, I'll have 12 of these squares that I'll be able to save, so. <laughs> Use them in something else. Right in my bin. Next up, let me get my handy dandy book. Step three, place, stitch the placement line for the room background. Gotcha. Back to the machine. So far, I've just been using the black. I haven't stitched it out, so... Usually, I stitch something for a test stitch and then stitch it again to actually use, and... I decided I was just going to jump in with both feet on this one, so I'm kind of guessing at the thread right now that it'll all be covered up. Okay, 
That is the placement for the room background. Where's my, oh, I set up my fabric song. I picked this purple. Oh, I could not decide. Because technically, for if this is the front door of the house, then this background here, I wonder if I should change it to thread. It shows it as black, and there's a black cat sitting there. If I change it to purple and use purple for around the door, I may end up with a purple cat. I probably should red the whole thing, huh? Nope. I'm just playing it by ear. I'm just jumping in both feet. <laughs> I'm being so bad. So this is going to be the siding on my house. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to trim. I'm not going to keep moving the camera for the trimming because all trimming is the same. And now you've seen the gist of it. And now we're going to do the columns. Okay. This might be a little disjointed. I had to recharge my phone, so it's been off. I need to take pain reliever anyway. All right, the columns are trimmed. Now it's going to sew, sew the crack in the edges. And I put a dark gray, I guess is what you'd call it. Let's hope this dark gray works. I bought these giant spools in preparation for having the giant embroider machine and Next is the placement for the column tops. And I'm using the same fabric. I just actually turned it the other way. I don't know that it'll make that much difference, but that's what I decided to do. I 
we want the lines going as straight as possible. to trim that out. Now the border on the capstones. Well, I don't know that they're called capstones. I don't know why I said that. I don't know what they're called. it's going to embroider these segments here between the top of the column and the column face believe it's the candle first we're gonna do this beautiful neon looking green I don't have any glow in the dark threads I've been looking at them and I farted around and didn't get any and then joined this oh I wish I had some glow in the dark thread right now but that's okay we don't even decorate for Halloween so it's not like a It'll be out more than a day, just during trick-or-treating. Boy, I hope I picked the right one. this I don't know if you can see it shimmery stuff metallic Madeira oh I've had it for a long time who knows if it will even so this is probably a good 10 15 years old so it may not work but we're gonna give it a shot because this should be the glow part of the light or the flame of the candle whatever you want to call it Whatever you interpret it as, how's that? So let's see if it'll work. We're so hot in this, I'll have to pick it out and cover it with white or yellow or something. Just a tiny little bit. Really? That's all? <laughs> Darn. I can see a little bit of shimmer in there. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that worked. See, I'm one of those people that I hoard everything. It's, I'm going to save it. 
I might need it later and then never use it. So let's find something that looks like, you know, old brass maybe. Oh, you know what? How about some gold? Not even popped open. Fine, it's not old. For the scones. Let's see what this looks like. You know, the sad thing is, is my house has got those sconces. <laughs> we built this place in 93. And my husband doesn't like to change things. Everything is... Except my downstairs floors. I finally got my... Beautiful oak floors. But that was just three years ago, so it took a long time to talk him into that one. We still have carpeting upstairs. The original carpeting upstairs. I'm going to do the whole thing in this, the whole sconce, I think. There was gray sections, and black sections, but I'm going to do them all in gold. And it broke. Hey, that actually lasted longer than I thought it would. We'll see. Probably should have slowed it down too. Not that smart. It's alright, I can now. Let's slow it down. I just gotta find it again. Hey! <laughs> Really? Well, I went through the whole thing. What? Oh, duh. Because I passed it. I'll do it on the, a real slow speed for the bulk of it, and let's we'll see. See if that helps. Shiny. Now it's time for the door. So, many, many years ago, I had made a quilt, and I still have some of the pieces. And this is actually from late 80s, mid to late 80s. Alex, oh, I'm so sorry. Alex was born in 89. I'm supposed to put that down, there's no placement line. Doesn't say that it puts down a placement line, so the piece goes from column to column and over the top, it should be fine. Now we need a thread. I'm 
And yes, it's August and I have put a sweat jacket on. When I close this door back here for this room, even though I have... Oh, look at that. Oh. I'll be back. Technical error. I have to pull all that out now. I popped out... Oh, duck on it. I popped out the seam up to this point. So that side's held down. And now I've got it taped to hold it into place. It's just some scotch tape. And none of it should be in the line of sewing. So, let's just go back. Good enough. And start. That's better. So if you do the door, you might want to tape the edges. The edges are far enough away that you can do it and it's not a problem. Time to trim. It says, embroider the detail and satin stitch around the door. I guess I should put my glasses on. What detail around the door? Hmm. I don't know, but obviously we could use whatever color we wanted. I'm going to stick with black. That was odd. Now what's it gonna do? Didn't do the sad stitch on it. Guess we'll just see. Oh, the boards. Gotcha. Quote lines. Think of it as, uh, the lines of the boards, they're gapping. Oh! Do I care? Let's see if we can make it. Nah, it won't do it. Cut. I try to run my bobbins out as far as I possibly can. Wow, be nice. Yeah, I had a whole box of L's. I had two whole boxes of L's. Because... My the machine that I stopped using when I got this was a PC eighty five. Or I'm sorry, PC eighty five hundred. Which when I bought it in two thousand, you know, they had come out with a newer model. You know, a, a, oh, what did they come out with? It? I don't even remember anymore. So I bought their display model about as local as you get for me uh, at that store I taken my pop in to be repaired and maintenance yeah, it, it's an old one you know, that was dead gone matter of fact they could not even get parts for it and 
but it wasn't old enough to be considered antique. You know, it was only 22 years old, 24 years old. Uh, he told me flat out it's not worth replacing because the motor was shot and uh, the gears were shot. So we come home and my husband took it all apart and scrapped the guts of it and gave me pieces of it, which, you know, like all the feet I've got, they work on my newer car. I don't buy them new, new, because I can't afford it. That pop was brand new when I bought it, but it was still a display model. <laughs> so, you know, it had been sewn on, but not a lot, because that was a very small store inside of a store that she closed up after that. She gave it up. She couldn't keep up with it. But... That machine was a dream. I had had it for a very long time. I took it in for a maintenance to a store in Ann Arbor and wanted to check out their embroidered machines. That's when I bought the PC8500. Their new models had come in, so that one was reduced to half price, and I came home with that one. Used it for 20 years. It still works great. But it's the old kind that takes those big cards that you slide in the side of the machine, no USB ports. I did tell my niece she could have it. She doesn't have room for it, but she still wants it. It, it also does sewing, and it's so, so nice still. So, I've got that upstairs packed away for when she has a bigger place and wants it. And if that doesn't happen, I guess I'll donate it or something someday. Or she can donate it. But I bought the, I bought the Pop Creative and thought, you know, I'll just have a sewing machine with the embroidery field. It's a huge embroidery field. But sometimes I want to sew while the embroidery machine is running. And I found it irritating. So when I got my disability, they give you that lump sum payment you know, because you've had to try for so long. And most of that went right into the bank through the bills. But I did take a little bit out and ordered this. Brand new. <laughs> no one else had ever used it. Yeah, the Fox Creative 4.5 I bought refurbished. So I got a heck of a deal on that one too. And as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to sell that. So if you know anybody that wants a Fop Creative 4.5 with numerous, it has all the hoops, plus I bought a couple of the flat metal uh, magnetic kind to go with it, and of course feet. I've, I've added to the feet collection. It's a really nice machine, but I, I think I'm going back to Janome. All right, the next thing is the ground in front, right? Using the bottom stitching line on B as a placement. Wrong side up. So I figured it's a haunted house. It's got dead grass, right? So... This is my... Dirt. I used to have this one that it had little splats of different colors in it. And it would have been perfect on this. And I kept picturing it. I'm looking through all my stash of fabrics. And no, I don't have any of that left. <laughs> Darn it. All right. Ooh, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Super long 
I found a spot on here that's not by, you know, the computer board and everything is over here. So I put a magnet way over above this at the top here towards the back away from the everything. And I taped it down <laughs> so that I can, I just toss my scissors up there. It is so handy. I'm not looking everywhere for them. So now we fold it over, hold taut and stitch down. Hold taut and stitch down. Because that won't get my fingers. Of course not. Tape. If it sews through a little bit of the tape, I can pick it out. That's not a big deal. I don't want my fabric binding up. Nope, doesn't come near it. Stitch trim. Be back. It says it's going to stitch grass. Since I did dirt, I'm thinking that olive color will make good dead looking grass. All right, dead grass. So now we've got steps. Mm. I have to keep changing the threads. I did get spoiled with that other machine. All right. But which part is it doing first? Dark gray first. All right. That's a very dark gray I've got on there. And we'll use that. And finally just gave up. When it broke, it was the seventh time the black thread broke on this one polar bear stitch out. It's one of my patterns. I thought, you know, I have to redo the pattern anyways because for some reason the jumps are in there. And I could have swore I'd already taken all the jumps out. So I'm going to redo the whole whipping thing again. So... Why keep fighting with the black? I just shut the whole dang thing off and it's still sitting there with that polar bear half done in there. I made that polar bear originally. Uh, late in the first decade, I think. Or in the teens. In the 2000s long time ago how's that and on my pc 8500 it stitched out like a dream i open it up into the new program and it automatically converted everything because i had made it in ped 6. no i think i made it in ped 4. i don't know it's been so long ago Anyhow, I've now got PED 10 and I opened it up in PED 10 and it converted all the stitches and I go to stitch it out on the baby lock and it, it had a billion jumps. I went, why? <laughs> and the fill wasn't right. It just didn't look good at all. So I tried to touch it up. Touching it up didn't do any good. So where did I put it? Top over, I think. Yes. Very pale. Very pale. 
Oh, I love these little things. I bought tons of them a couple of years ago. Um, before the pandemic. Uh, before it, the world went nuts. And they didn't cost me much then. I don't know what what they would cost nowadays. But they work pretty good. They don't spring back. So once they've been on a big spool, unless you sit here and just keep holding it, pushing it, it is just like a rub, like silicone. But I still like them. They work just fine as far as I'm concerned. Says the crack on the step shows it as black, and it set it with the last thing, which was gray. But I think it's a step, and then after that is dirt. for the black even though I did oops helps if you cut it come here jeez I opted for the black for the crack even though I used the dark gray on the columns because I've got dark gray for the treads and I didn't think it would look right so now I have to do dirt so many colors. Ooh, what do I want? Dut. That looks like dirt. Let's use these little baby ones. it up to the fabric and I didn't even mean to. Not bad. I didn't even try. Hmm. Now what are you going to do? gotta go back to the green yay I love this green I have got to find a big spool of this green I use it so much mm. I got it for blending it was all the rage at one point Lord making those patterns was a nightmare and you know you still find patterns being made that way but right now Simple is what everybody wants. And I like simple. Life is complicated enough. All right. Some ectoplasm. 
I think I should have done my candles a dark purple. We'll look good with the purple house. My mistake. I'm going to change that now. That was going to be my window, but with the slime right next to it, maybe I won't use that for the window. I didn't even cut it. We're just going to... Do I want the lines going up and down? Yeah. Almost looks like water dripping off the end, doesn't it? Okay. Go! Now I'll need to trim it before we do the next step. So I could have used any thread I wanted to for that part, but I didn't want to waste my green. I don't have a whole lot of that left. Well, it's a very pale pink, but it's supposed to be a window, so it would have looked really cute if I had some iridescent. Well... I am trying to use what I have. That's the rule this year. Try not to buy more fabrics and such. Really? What are you doing now? So this is going to do the same color. This is going to do my numbers. The 13. The 13 and the sad stitch around the window is one color. So no, we're not going to use this. Nope. No, 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 no. I wish I had some silver. I could go back to the gold, but yeah, that's too much. Too, too much. I have so many threads. I would love to... Really? Stop. You said you were sewing. Oh my gosh. Gotta take it out. I'll be back. This. I read the wrong spot in the book. It really helps if you mark them off as you're going. I had to stop and let the cat out. Cats can't read signs, so he was screaming bloody murder. And, you know, he can't read the sign that says, go away. <laughs> so, I had to stop, go and take care of him, come back. I looked at the wrong spot. I thought the next part was the satin and the number, and I wanted that in this color. No, it's doing the spider web. I needed the black for that spot. Oh, cut. <laughs> So now I have to pick all those out. Not a big deal. This thing takes an hour to do. That's just the stitching part. So this video will probably be very long and no one will watch it anyway. So what's the difference? All out. <laughs> it wasn't actually too hard to get out. Used a pokey tool and loosened it up a little bit. Okay, so what we need is our black. This needs to get done. I'm in agony. 
Now it's going to stitch the spider web. Then we do the number and the get rich I want to get me a baby locker brother just a step or two higher it needs to come with a six by ten to recover So technically, your number is separate. It's in the same spot in the instructions, and they use the same color for both of them, so I thought it stitched out all in one color, but it doesn't. I could have used this color for my numbers and a different color for the frame around the window. Oh well, now that I know that. It's too late. I've already made my block. the knocker well I didn't know that was going to be next I think we'll give up on the number being this color because now it's been used above it and below it and the number can be in something else I have this tiny itty bit of pink left on this spool that I figured isn't enough to do anything with, but I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away. I'm going to put a big, big spin thing on it, end cap on it. Let's see if that'll work. The lower your spool of thread gets, the harder it is for it to come off because it's been wound so tight down below. Look, it won't even stay up in the thing. It's springing right back down. So it can be a little difficult using up the last of it. But there's got, I'm sure there's enough left for 13 to do a number. So now it's going to do the cat. And we don't want a pink cat. <laughs> Never say die. It's still going. <laughs> I'll save it for the next time I need just a touch. So I've gone through my threads. I found an even darker gray. And we're going to give this one a shot because I want it to show up against the black on the door.
Okay, it's ready to do the eyes. There are still one, two, three, four colors left to go. I have to shut everything down. So we will pick this up tomorrow when the storms have gone. Well, the thunderbomb just passed through last night. It is raining, 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 but there's no thunders. So let's try to finish this. We're at the eyes. They want yellow glowing eyes. So with this flourish too, it'll bring the pattern back up, but it didn't save this. Well, actually, yes, it did. I'm sorry. And it saved the spot for me, but I wasn't paying attention and I had to fix that because I automatically hit the button and started looking. I did decide that I have to have more purple in this because I love purple. So I'm going to do my outline satin stitch in a nice deep royal purple. Just because I like purple. It's for me, so why not? All right. It's the skull now. Yes. Yes. Skull. I'm freezing. Our air is still on. It's only mid-70s outside. Our air is set at 71. I am free. What are you caught on? What are you caught on? No, no, no. Something's going on in here. Let me see. Hmm. Wow, that feels like it's dragging. That's so strange. This is the final stitching part. It is the satin stitch on the outside. Now I was just on the Facebook group for Sweet Pea has a Facebook group for this Halloween quilt. And I saw a couple of comments about how theirs didn't meet up and get covered. Now the only spot where I have a problem is where I trimmed too close and the fabric was pulled away from these stitches. And it should get covered. We'll see. It is buckling. I think the next panel I might do with two layers of cutaway. I'm planning to cut it away from the back of the quilt piece anyways. And see if I can get a little less buckling. Simply because the buckling causes stitches to go where you don't want them to. So the more buckling you have the more likely, say, outline stitches are off. Everything looks like it hit okay, but I'm kind of trying to look under a machine at it. So let's do this beautiful royal purple satin 
outline stitch and this square will finally be done it does it says the stitch out is 58 minutes so yeah it takes a long time a long time I just use a cotton batting some scraps from a quilt I mean I got this wide chunk and I use it in everything now um, if you want it a little more loft then use the polyester fiber fill they tend to have a thicker loft the cotton batting you could use two layers I don't want it to have a lot of loft I may after I pieced all these together I'm probably going to put them on another chunk and then quilt do in the ditch quilting between the blocks that's what I'm thinking you the blocks are a surprise we don't get to see the rest of the blocks until they're issued so it'll probably be when I finally get them all that I decide I think I see what they're talking about this one right here might be off because that's the center line and that's quite a ways away from that pillar or I should say pillar the uh, background piece see this is going on the outside of that background piece too so when it may when they do the background piece it's probably fine but as you put all those stitches in it and it pulls it in it no longer meets an extra layer oh this is just catching it just catching it good enough An another layer of cutaway would probably eliminate that problem altogether and as I said it didn't happen with mine if they're using a lighter weight a lighter weight cutaway this is um, I think it's a three and I know the three stands for like ounces per but I don't know I don't know for what <laughs> I think this was a three I bought the whole bolt Where's my bolt? oh it only says heavyweight this is it finished before I've trimmed all the threads up I think it turned out pretty good and of course at the beginning the thumbnail will be it all trimmed up and set out it says in the instructions to now trim it a half an inch away from the seam line so this little bit here is actually all you're gonna see of your background We'll trim a half inch away from this to square it up. But yeah, see how, now they were even, but see how on the sides they're not? That's from the pull. The next block I'm going to do, I'm going to use two layers cut away. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've lasted this long, wow. <laughs> Congratulations. And we hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.